Howdy guys, how's it going? Okay, today we are going to be doing the first in our assault rifle submachine gun setups. We're going to be looking at the M13, which is an automatic assault rifle featuring a short stroke piston system that keeps the fire rate high and the recoil low. This is one of my favorite ARs to run in the submachine gun setup dash configuration just because of that high fire rate. It just plays so well and it really, really reminds me, not, not in the looks and how it handles necessarily, but just between the stats and the way it plays in game. It reminds me of the MP7, and that'd be like one of the closest things I would compare it to. But let's throw the attachments on this bad boy that are going to turn it into a submachine gun to be reckoned with. We're going to start with the barrel, and we're going to be going for a little bit of a two-in-one two deal. We're going to be going with the Tempest Cyclone because this gives us a monolithic suppressor. Now, I know what you're thinking. If we're going with a sub setup, why not throw on the shortest barrel? Okay, now that would make sense, and you can do that for the fastest ADS type possible once we add on the other attachments but like I said this is about like the most well-rounded submachine gun setup and it's not all about ADS so that monolithic suppressor actually does give us a bit of range and that's going to come in handy about equalizing our stats and how this gun performs in game when trying to deal with people at longer ranges next we're going to go down to under barrel and we're going to be throwing on the Ranger foregrip okay now normally I go with the Merc foregrip but this th this gun already has very good hip fire accuracy and because of that fast fire rate uh, you don't really need the accuracy added hip fire advantage of the Merc foregrip, so the Ranger is the one to go with. Then over to ammunition, we're going to throw on a 60 round mag, because with that faster fire rate, you do burn through ammo pretty gosh dang fast, and if you're playing on maps that are really close up, like, you know, shipment, or shoot house, or something along those lines, having that extra mag capacity can lead to some pretty good collateral kills, uh, you know, quad feeds and things of that nature. Then over to your rear grip, we're going to be throwing on the stippled grip tape to help with our AD time. Finally, we're going to go up to stock and we're going to throw on no stock. Now, I went back and forth between trying the M13 skeleton and the no stock and it's definitely better with the no stock because the, the your accuracy really isn't affected that much. I mean, I even hopped in a custom game and looked at both of these and I couldn't tell much of a difference. Like, definitely not enough difference to justify using uh, the skeleton over the no stock. So, there she is. That, this right here is the best possible way to set up your M13 to run like a sub machine gun in game and still be able to compete with ARs and things of that nature at medium to long range. Okay, so a quick rundown of the class as a whole. We got the M13 set up the way that I just showed you. Then, we got our Deagle set up with that Platinum Camo set up the way that I showed in the Deagle class setup video that I put out. And I have this here because it's actually meant to play more as my long range weapon. If there's somebody really posted up far away, instead of trying to compete with the M13, I'll just pull this bad boy out, mount up on a wall, and pop them in the noggin, and then they're no longer a problem. For perks, we're running EOD, Hardline, and Shriapnel. Lethals, we got the tried and true frag grenade and for tacticals I'm running a flash grenade. So with all that stuff laid out on the table and all that stuff set up, let's hop into a match. Okay, now for this class, we are going to showcase it in a game of headquarters on Gunrunner. Now, these games right here can actually run pretty long. Uh, so we're just going to have to see how she goes. But I mean, this right here, this map, most of the engagements are close, you know, really up close. So it's a, it's a good way to take a look at how the ARs run in a sub configuration. And whenever, whenever you're dealing with headquarters, you're mostly dealing around inside rooms and stuff. Some of the headquarters, I think the positions are outside. I'm relatively new to, uh, to playing headquarters on some of these maps. I had not got a lot of experience with them. So we're just going to have to see how she blows. I feel like that is going down really fast. Okay, okay, okay. We got it, we got it. Let me double check this too. Okay, everything looks steady and even there. With headquarters, you, you end up having to kind of take... I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it camping right off the rip. I would more call it like you're just posting up and moving around where you need to go. So it's it's one of the, the game modes where staying in a certain place for an extended period of time is, is understandable because that's just what you have to do to, to compete in the game. But if you're when you're playing the objective hard in these game modes, your your KD suffers. So it because there's a lot of angles where people can can spawn. But I mean, you can see the ADS time, hip fire, baby. I'm telling you, this gun right here is amazing. Like this right here gives all the legit subs one heck of a run for their money. Wait, wait, reset, reset, throw. 
Is that going to get somebody? Oh my god. If that did, dude, that'd be crazy. Okay, we got two teammates down already. We're top of the leaderboard. Three kills. We got the only cap. I'm pretty sure these guys are going to be pushing through mid. Okay, come on now. Oh. I'm really surprised nobody's pushing this way. Oh, okay. Well, he did. He's, he's posted up back there. But look, we're already going to be up 30 kills. 30 kills. Cool deal. The last headquarters match I played was like a really head-to-head -head game with the teams. Like, it was pretty. A, it was a pretty even matchup, the way that teams was playing for the objective. And it lasted for like 20, 25 minutes. I'm hoping this one right here don't last any longer than 15 because that can just make the video really, really drawn out. I'm just going to try to push in what I can so I can showcase this weapon for what it is. It's going to be hard to get long shot engagements, but I mean, that's not why you uh, you do it. So right there was a pretty good testament to its accuracy standing up. That's what the Merc foregrip's for. Like I said, our ADS time is pretty goddamn good. Like, it's nothing, no, nothing super crazy fast, nothing to write home about. But it's more, it's more than enough to win those close-up gunfights. And it's you want that foregrip because you want you need to be able to compete at range, okay? Especially when you're going to be having people mounting on uh, mounting on objects and walls and stuff. Because like with these, if people make it to the objective first and they're able to post up, kind of like we was right there at the beginning, because they know that you got to push to them. Uh, I mean, because that's that's the whole point of the game mode that we're in. Oh my wiener dog, hello. Okay, so right, I don't know what spawns was right there, but. It happens. Now we just gotta sit back and watch your teammates go in for Betty Jen. This can be the, one of the only boring parts about this game mode, but it, you get used to it pretty quick. But we are actually running through these, man. This game might go. This game might last. Uh, might just last under ten. If this, if this game lasts under ten, I'll be thoroughly surprised. Won't be upset, but I'll be surprised. I was hoping to drop at least twenty kills, though. Come on now. Come on now, teammate. Get, quit doing it to him. Okay, cool deal. So we back in. The, back in the fight. Let's see if we can push up. We'll be spawning that back left or around the, uh... Oh my god, this guy's... This guy's spawn up here. I don't even ask me what that accuracy was, because... I couldn't tell you. Okay, we had a teammate just screaming in the mic right there. Boom. Boom, baby. Look at us go. I'm telling you, this gun... I, this class right here, boys, you gotta, you gotta try it out. Oh, got a little lag spike right there. Okay, we got a teammate up in here watching her back. They gotta be pushing through this right side, I would think. Oh, we got a guy up top. Teammates popped him down right quick, fast, and in a hurry. They might have they might have the good objective spawn. Nope. He's pushing in the back. Okay, nine kills, top of the leaderboard. We're running the we're running the, the score by about three hundred. Got that quick math right there. I'd like to get some mounted kills just to because that's actually something I hadn't done too much this setup, because this is more of a push and push and go. Yeah, I'm going to throw that there and see if he pushes this way. That grenade should cover us. Nah, he's still here. Did I lie? Okay, respawn's disabled. I'm going to kind of chill right here in this corner, be a little camping biscuit. And just try to catch him pushing into the objective. Hey, and there we go. I'm down. I, see, the nice thing on here is something if you haven't noticed. Poop! So you, you can see underneath the train cars right there, so it's really it's really easy to see people coming, and most people don't know that. It's like a very overlooked detail to this map, and you can even you can even shoot through it very well. Like if you're if you crawl right underneath the train cars right there, you have really good visibility, and you can just take out people's shins. You know, you just be an ankle biter. Okay, yeah, teammate, we need to let him get one headquarters so we can draw this game out a little bit. This game's gonna be over. I think we should. Yeah, I think we'll definitely hit the 10 minute mark, though. We should definitely hit the 10 minute mark. Because I know some of the class setup. Like, this is this is going to be my best, like, submachine class setup for this. I've played around with a couple of the other stocks on this thing. But running no stock seems to be the way to go. Because you get the, just that extra little bit of uh, ADS quickness, and it doesn't really uh, affect the accuracy that much. Okay, ooh, ooh that, was a, that was a ping spike right there. Ping spike to Mars and back. Alright, still top of the leaderboard, 12 kills. Normally with this, you have uh, I have higher kill gains, but it's just the way that the, the enemy team that we're faced against is playing right now. That is going to blow up right in front of my face. 
We're going to use our tacticals and our substrate advantage. Let's see if we can post up right here and get, get some kills with this. So, because this, this will be like a bit of a long range engagement. And whenever you, uh, whenever you're able to mount on something, your accuracy isn't really that affected. But having a gun with 60 rounds of ammo, because like when you compare it to the MP7, the MP7 is probably my favorite submachine gun. So you got 60 rounds of the mag, very fast fire rate. Uh, it's it's a laser though. So I mean, like the MP7 can outperform this gun in in the sub category, like without a doubt. And you got me. I mean, this thing is still an AR. It's meant to be an AR. So that whenever they design this. Whenever they have these attachments, they're trying to equalize it out in the game from a de developmental standpoint, developer standpoint, I guess I should say. You know, they they're not they don't want anything to be overpowered in in any in any way that they can control, and that the subs need to be able to 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 be subs and not be like shadowed by ARs, e even with certain attachments that would pretty much put them in the exact same real life category. So. That's what we're left with. So we need that. We really need to run a gun. So we've got a minute and 29 left, and I think that only counts down during the objective and during contestments. So in that time frame, that should buy us about five, ten more minutes. So right there, medium range engagement. We we burned right through them. Where am I getting shot from? Got to see if we can heal up. Going to throw some nades down the train car. Oh, we got a guy posted up right there. Boom, King Slayer. Love popping the guy at the top of the leaderboard. Okay, we got everybody pushing in mid-map here. They got to come through, you know? They got to come through. Oh. Sweet. 16, yeah, four more kills. We got that, no problem. Let's pop a UAV. We're still... We got we got one teammate going hard for the captures. I, I normally... I like to be the guy on our... Okay, well, that guy's just chilling. I like to be the guy that leads in captures and everything because I really like to know that I'm playing the objective. I'm trying to make it happen. But it's good to know that I have teammates that aren't slacking. It's, it, it's never good when you have to carry their weight. Boom. Hip fire. This thing's got a really good hip fire, too. That guy's going to be up top, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Whenever you cap on headquarters, it's a really good idea to push back because a lot of people like to stay right on it, which if you're in a really confined space, that's not a good idea. And just in general, it's not a good idea because they normally just bombard it with grenades and tacticals and score streaks if they got it. I thought it went to 250, but it went... Oh, wait, did the time... Okay, score limit reach. Never mind. Well, look at that. We didn't quite hit 20 kills, which is unfortunate, but you still got to see a full range of engagements on there. So, th I'm telling you guys, this right here is a phenomenal sub setup, even though it's in the AR category. Like, you get the same same advantages. So, just give it a, give it a run, and I'm going to be doing this with all the ARs, be showing the best way that you can play them like a sub, and I'm going to try to do something like that with the submachine guns and show how they can play more of an AR role with them. Uh, and just play around the variations. I got some good stuff coming. Um, so yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments what you think of the video and the guns you'd like to see me do next, and uh, if you want to see any comparison videos of these ARs. So yeah, until the next one, adios.